Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. <laughs> I'm here with um, me, my dog, and my horse. The whole gang. <laughs> so anyway, today's topic I wanted to talk about was this idea called sansara. It's a concept from Buddhism where, um, well basically in Buddhism, it's, it's a given that you're reincarnated. You know, that when you die, you're either going to come back as yourself um, like as a human, you're going to come back as an animal, or um, you're going to reach nirvana, and then you, you'll stop the cycle, right? So the whole cycle of death and rebirth, that's called sansara, and it's basically like this wheel. It's represented as a wheel, because you just keep going round and round and round and round in circles. And basically, the Buddhists say that the goal in life, or the goal throughout many lifetimes, is to each time that you go around the wheel is to live a live it better quote unquote like do a better job um, of living your life so that you will eventually accomplish all of the tasks that you were sent to accomplish on this earth and then you will reach nirvana right there's some kind of concept actually where i believe it's karmic i forget how the exact phrasing is but there's this idea basically that you're sent on this world you're sent back to this world because you had a previous life and you're sent back to the world to complete your karmic debt to pay it off and that means that there's certain things that you, know, you didn't do or you needed to do in other lifetimes that you were not able to accomplish so that's why you're here in this one so that wheel of, of death and rebirth and struggle is called sansara and it's a concept that it actually took a few years for it to evolve, right? In at least my brain. And the first time, well, I took psychedelics, I basically like took a bunch of mushrooms, right? Massive amount of mushrooms. And I reached this point where I remember I got stuck in this loop, right? And my house is, was in the shape of like an L. And so I got caught in this loop where I just kept walking around the house. Like I would walk from one side of the house, go up, turn left, go outside, turn on the faucet, wash my feet, come back in, walk back, walk back. The, and I don't know how long I got stuck in this loop, maybe like an hour, maybe multiple hours. But I remember being conscious of walking around my house and thinking, oh crap, I'm stuck in this loop and I literally cannot change. Like my actions cannot like I can't get off this ride, you know what I'm saying? And I was getting really anxious because I just, it was weird. It was like my body was trapped in this, in this motions, right? In these motions, in this cycle. And whatever, what, had to, what happened eventually was that um, after a certain amount of time, I walked past my trash can, which was in the corner. And I noticed that there was a bunch of ants going in the trash can. I guess they were going, you know, there was some kind of trash or whatever, some kind of organic material. So the ants were basically like, they made a huge line and they were going inside the trash can. And I remember that that's what finally snapped me out. I was like, oh crap, this is dirty. I have to go fix it and clean it. And then my body just snapped out. And I was like, whoa. Like it snapped me out of that loop that I had been stuck in, just walking around the house, turning on the faucet and such. That finally snapped me out. And... The point of that was that I remember that after I snapped out, I was cleaning the trash can and I saw the light and the light was in a different position than when I had, you know, than, than previously, like the light angle had changed. So I'm like, oh, wow, it must be in the evening, you know, so that means that I had been there for some time. I had just been pacing. And the point of that story is basically that that's kind of what sansara is. Like, if you look at your life. Like, let's say you look at your life over the course of, like, say, a month or a year, right? Yeah, day to day, you know, you're, you're, you might vary in what you do, but, like, generally, especially if, you work, if you're a 9 to 5 right, you're a wage slave, you're basically waking up 7, 8, you're getting in the shower, brushing your teeth, eating breakfast, getting ready for work, 
getting in your car, going to tra- you know, sitting in traffic, getting to your job, sitting in your job for how many, who knows how many hours. And you basically come home and do it all over again, right? <laughs> and you just do this in and out each day over months or years of your life. And it's just the same pattern. It's like a, it's just like a vicious cycle. Like maybe one day instead of going for lunch to McDonald's, maybe you'll go to the deli or you'll get, you know, a salad or something. But in general, you know, what, whatever meal you eat for lunch, you're still taking your same lunch at noon. You know what I mean? And it's till 1.30 and then you clock back in and then you got to do it all over again, right? And then every weekend you have Saturday and Sunday off and then you got to go back on Monday again, right? It's like clockwork. So that's basically the cycle of sansara, right? It's this cycle of death and rebirth and this feeling of like you're just stuck in this loop, right? And if you think about this, right, let's say over the course of a month, over a year, over a decade, over a lifetime, you know what I mean? So that's, imagine if you did the same thing for multiple lifetimes. Let's say you, you came back one life and then, you know, let's say you met the love of your life at the age of 23 and then you fucked it up, right? And then you never got that chance again. That's one life, right? You come back again, you know, that person is still tied to you energetically because I heard that there is this, in, in, Hindu, in Hinduism, there's this tradition where if you get married, there's this little ritual that you do where it binds you together for seven lifetimes. So I remember hearing this joke from this comedian. He's like, so, so if you get bound for seven lifetimes, what does that mean? If I did that in this life, does that mean that I renew for another seven or... If I, in the next life, if I die, what happens, right? Like, maybe I don't get married in that life, so then I have six left, you know what I mean? Who knows? But the idea is that, you know what I mean? That you come to this life in order to do your life differently, in order to beat the cycle, get out of the cycle, right? Like, stop, like, maybe the next time I go around, I'll meet the love of my life at 23, and then I won't fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe, maybe this time we'll have kids. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the cycle of sansara. So, in in Buddhism, there's attaining nirvana. Basically, means that you escape the cycle, right? You were able to accomplish all the things. You achieve enlightenment. You realize that time is finite that the present, it's only the present, and that you must live your life to the fullest each day, right? When you, re- when you reach that uh, enlightenment, then, and you successfully accomplish all of your tasks, yeah, you basically reach nirvana, right? You basically reach nirvana. And what that means is, is that you reach a level where you let go of all your worldly attachments, Right, Because the Buddhists say that suffering comes from desire. It comes from attachments. You know, like I want this woman and she's not with me, so I suffer, right? I want um, a lot of money so that I can escape poverty. So then that means that I work my ass off so that I can escape it. Suffering, right? Um, You know, my child is... We had a child with, you know, my partner and, you know, it was an accident, but they're here now. So now we have to raise them. We suffer, right? (laughs) So it's like a core concept, right? Attachments are what create desire, which is what creates unhappiness, which is what creates suffering. So if you're able to let go of all attachments, you know, if you're able to say, okay, it doesn't matter, you know, my family, it doesn't matter material wealth it doesn't matter nothing matters right no attachments matter i could just that means that you reach this level of like you can just move through life like if you don't if you're not attached to anything just you can discard this and go for another one or you know what i mean like if you have no house what's stopping you from traveling all around the world as an example right so they say that when one reaches nirvana it's when they let go of all attachments. That's, that's the main form of retaining nirvana. However, 
the Buddhists recognize a second form of enlightenment, which is not as perfect, but it's almost as perfect. Now, the second form is when somebody removes almost, almost every one of their detachments, right? Material wealth, you know, they're able to give up, you know, whatever sacrifice they must make, they're able to do. However, they reach enlightenment, they live in the present, all good. The only thing is that there's some types of people who reach nirvana and they let go of everything else, everything else, but the only thing they cannot let go of is their love and attachment for the people they left behind back on earth, right? So what happens with those people is that they technically, you know, were allowed into nirvana, but they say, no, 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 I'm going to go back and I'm going to see if I can bring as many people as I can with me and I'll go back for another round, right? That's what's called a bodhisattva, right? That's like someone who reached nirvana, but they decided to go back to love and help the people who remained, right? That's the second type. So... How do I explain? The first time that I realized this was when that first time I took mushrooms, right? When I got stuck in the loop. But the second time that I came across samsara was a few years later. And what happened was, is that I ended up going, I bought a piece of property, right? And I spent about a year and a half just getting it all ready, you know, like cutting trees, making a little space to put a campsite, making trails, you know, making sure the property is all cared for, you know. And I finally finished and then I decided that, you know, I wanted to go camp there for three days for Christmas because that was a special time for me because it's Christmas, first of all. And it was like a celebration because it's the first time that there's not going to be rain. So the weather's going to be good. So it's like a way to celebrate all the hard work I've done. So I ended up going and taking some acid <laughs> when I when I camped. And um, <clears throat> and the idea of samsara came back. And I got this idea, you know. Well, how do I explain? There's a reason why when you get reincarnated and you come back onto earth, you don't have memory of your previous life. Now, the idea of reincarnation, right, is that theoretically, I mean, that means that you're immortal, right? Because you're just getting reincarnated, right? Your same soul, you're just coming back in a different body. Technically, that means you're immortal, right? Now... When I took the acid and I was camping, I was basically there for three days, right? The first day, my friend stayed with me that night. So I was, I had some company. And I woke up and there was one friend still there. Everybody else left. He chilled for a little bit and then he left, you know, like a couple hours later. And so then basically from like 10 a.m. onwards, that whole day, night, and then the following morning, I was basically by myself. So I, you know, I was motivated, the property was nice, beautiful place. I just enjoyed the nature and, you know, I had some work to do on the property, like I had to go cut some trails, you know what I mean? So there was work to be done. But then at the end, you know, like the sun was setting and I had my little fire and, you know, I just, it occurred to me, right? You know, this is really nice. This is beautiful. You know, nature. I mean, it's the most sacred thing on earth. It's God's creation, right? But, you know, how do I explain? If I'm immortal, right, then this is all nice and all, right? To be on this earth, to enjoy God's creation, but by yourself? 
I mean, you're immortal, so does that mean that you're just going to be by yourself forever? So that kind of thought is what I got stuck on, I guess. How do you explain? And it's kind of what made the whole sansara thing come full circle. No pun intended. But the whole idea for sansara, right, is that you know you come here and then you're able to accomplish all of the things that you had wanted to do in all of your previous lives. You're here to repay your karmic debt. But now what happens when you successfully accomplish it? You know, what if you're able to live a successful life? What if that life, you know, you come back and you live a perfect life? You know, you treat every single person with respect like Jesus. You know what I mean? You you don't commit any sins. You know what I mean? Only good vibes. Let's say you end up you end up in the new in the new heaven, right? Let's say you end up in heaven. But what's the point if you're by yourself? Right? What's the point of being in heaven if you're just completely alone all the time? So I think that's kind of like the real goal. You know, when you reach enlightenment, when you become like an advanced ascended person, it's just you realize that you know, it's all good and dandy to be by yourself, but what really makes life special and worth living is that you're able to live it with other people. You know, so if you're able to live a perfect life, then, but then everyone else dies, then what's the point? You know what I mean? So that's why the Bodhisattva is so respected in Buddhist teachings, because the Bodhisattva knows that even if you attain immortality, you know, what really makes the experience is having the other people. You know what I mean? So if you can come back and you can help other people, you know, accomplish their goals and, and free themselves, you know, clear their own karma. Like, instead of living a shit life, help them to live a better life, you know, to not make the same mistakes. I think that's, that's the real point. You know, that's kind of why we're on this earth. You know, Jesus, that's basically in Christian religion, that's like why Jesus came. Because Jesus wanted to bring everyone else with him. You know what I mean? So, I am making this video because, you know, I went through some deep meditation. And that's kind of the conclusion that I came to. You know, so... I guess I just wanted to share with the world. So, anyway. I think we're done for today. Hanging out with the gang. The sun's getting kind of low. So I should get back before it gets too dark. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys get something out of this. Ew.